Welcome all of you guys to the uh, new Let's Play. It's going to be Icewind Dale uh, Enhanced Edition. And I have stated before that this is a game I was really waiting for. And I know that I haven't completed the last couple of uh, playthroughs I started. But this one I just want to enjoy. And, and I want to, yeah, I want to just complete it totally because. Icewind Dale is a great game, it has a lot of atmosphere, it has like six characters in this snowy area and um, yeah, I mean, it's a real adventure, even more so than, than Baldur's Gate in my regard, so I'm going to enjoy this immensely and uh, I hope you guys enjoy this Let's Play, I'm going to jump right in and uh, hopefully it's going to be an epic uh, journey. Let's, uh, let's start. I'm not going to show the introduction, well... Perhaps a bit of it. They say that history is the greatest of all teachers, and the tales of past deeds define who we are in the present, and what we shall be in the future. It is said that such tales shall, with each telling, illuminate us all with the light of truth. I shall tell you of such a tale. It is a tale quite familiar to me, for I have spent nearly a lifetime piecing it together and chronicling it here within this book. For years I have pondered its passages, studying every line, committing each word to memory. Perhaps now, in the telling of it, I shall at last find the answers I seek. Our story takes place in the northern region of Faerun, known as Icewind Dale. It is a harsh, frozen land, cut off from the rest of the world by a wall of jagged peaks called the spine of the world. For centuries, the icy plains of the Dale have been home to the barbarian peoples of the Uthgard and Regedmen. Huddled together in small, closely knit tribes, the barbarians lived simple lives, free, proud, and fiercely independent. Until the day an archmage named Arakar came to Icewind Dale. With an army of mercenaries, Arakan sought to conquer the north and force the fierce barbarians into slavery. Long weeks of battle followed, and the scattered barbarian tribes suffered terrible losses. Defeat seemed inevitable. In their darkest hour, a barbarian shaman named Gerald came forth and demanded a council between all the remaining tribes of the North. A respected warrior, Jared persuaded the council to put aside their differences and unite against Arakan. Strengthened by a new sense of purpose, the barbarians rallied behind their new leader. The combined might of the Northmen proved more than a match for Arakan, who had counted on the division of the tribe. Wave after wave of barbarian warriors tore into Arakan's hired army, forcing them on the defensive and ultimately into full retreat. As his army crumbled around him, Arakan had time for one last desperate act before his enemies descended upon him. Drawing upon his remaining power, the Archmage breached the planar boundaries, tearing open a portal to the lower plane. The foolish Archmage's cries of victory immediately turned to shrieks of terror as the hideous and twisted shapes of demon kind materialized from the portal and poured onto the battlefield. The sudden appearance of the demons drove the combatants, barbarian and mercenary alike, to turn to meet the new threat side by side. The remaining warriors bravely charged the portal to drive the hellspawn back and were slaughtered by the hundreds. As his people fell around him, the barbarian shaman, Jared, looked up from the blood-drenched snow of the battlefield and caught sight of a lone figure high upon a ridge in the distance. Jared immediately recognized this vision as an omen from his god, Tempus, and in that instant, he knew what had to be done. Shouting cries to his god, he charged through the ranks of the demons and plunged into the battle. Jared's blood 
are fused with the energies of the portal. An explosion of white light engulfed the battlefield. When the light subsided, the demons were gone, and the portal was closed. In its place hovered a disk of solid stone. Frozen within the center of the disk was Jared's body, locked in his final moment of agony, in his final moment of triumph for all eternity. But that is not the end of our tale. It is but the beginning. All right, well, I've never seen that movie. Um, I, I, honestly, I never have. So it's quite uh, refreshing, to say the least, to, to see it. And it's quite a... Quite an interesting tale, I have to say. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm glad I, uh, I I saw it. Absolutely. Okay, all right. I'm sorry. I just had to check that my uh, recording was good, but it is. Oh, uh, that's all nice and well. I mean, the sound should be okay. And um, yeah, we're going to start the game now. That we start with six characters: Goris, Bern, Cadriel, Kirika, Ilauna, and Felicia. And they're all going to be deleted because, of course, we're going to create our own party of six characters. And um, I have to say that this is just something I, I think is great because, yeah, creating one character is, is nice, but you have to, to, yeah, to choose one. And that's difficult because I want to play a paladin, but I want to play uh, like a mage as well, and perhaps uh, like some kind of dwarf. And now we can just create our own party. Even better, uh, we can now choose kits uh, as we could in Baldur's Gate 2. So instead of the regular plain classes like they were originally in Icewind Dale, for the first time ever I can now play this game using kits. And um, kits are just in enormously interesting. Let's create our first character and I am going to be stereotypical here but I am going to start with a paladin, as I did in Baldur's Gate 2. And um, it's going to be a human, a paladin, and now we can choose a class. I think I chose the Cavalier in, uh, in, in Baldur's Gate 2, and I might choose it again because it's a good class. It's very nice against demons um, and dragons. Although the Inquisitor is, uh, of course, great as well. It's like uh, Kaldor. May not cast priest spells, however, which is a bit of a letdown. Cavalier may not use ranged weapons, which is not really a problem, I believe. And uh, yeah, yeah, I, I'll start with a with a paladin, lawful good, and uh, let's roll. I mean, we're going to roll a lot because I want to have 85 minimum, but we'll try some more times to get a higher roll. Uh, 91, let's just uh, call it a day, shall we? Uh, intelligence 10, dexterity 13, um, I need some constitution probably, seven, all 17, wisdom's not that important, uh, charisma, and uh, yeah, let's make it a very strong character. 1886. That's that's a very nice roll for for a paladin. Uh, all right. So then the skills we can choose four, and we'll choose uh, the long sword twice, and we'll choose the um, sword and shield style. Excellent. And then the appearance is going to be metallic with red, as is the uh, picture. Air is uh, no, it's uh, kind of black, really, on the picture, light brown. And let's see what are we going to choose? No. I wash me beard in your filth. I'll be the leader for now. God's grant me. I would be on time. Yes, we must halt. Let us continue. Priest, I need a priest. Well, <sighs> huh? yeah, I'll choose on this time. one. That's for me. It's like a paladin. And of course his name is Mervor again. So that's our first character, it's uh, the Paladin. Now things are going to be interesting. What are we going to create next? We need another fighter. And um, 
I do want it to be a male. I always like this portrait. It's just a great picture. Looks like Gimli. And um, then it has to be a dwarf. And... It has to be a fighter as well. But then there are a couple of options. I'm not going to choose a Kensai. Because uh, Kensai cannot use any armor. And he's in full armor on the picture. So that doesn't fit. A wizard slayer is uh, useful, but cannot use any magic items. A berserker I may not spell. That's that's all right. But I mean, I've never played a dwarf and defender, and this seems like the perfect chance to test it. So let's make a chaotic good dwarf and dwarf and defender. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now we need a good roll, 85 at the least. Sometimes you're clicking for ages, but uh, I do want some nice characters. 85. Let's try 20 more times. 16, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Alright. 85 it is. And um, we don't need any wisdom. We don't need any intelligence. We do need a lot of constitution. 19 even. And um, let's make a strength 17 because I, uh, yeah, I like, I don't want to make like this overpowered party. So let's, let's, let's leave it at 17, 15. Well, he's not a bit wise and some more charisma. It's not really, uh, doesn't really matter. And he likes to use uh, axes. And, but he also uses a sword because he's, he's a defending uh, character. His clothing is again metallic and brown this time. And we need, I think it's this one. I wash my beard or, and steal it in ice and rest. Yeah, I like this one better. And his name is. Uh, I like uh, like this sort of the rings name. Thurin. Thurin. Well, Thurin's alright. Thurin. Alright. Mervor and Thurin, third character. The third one is easy as well, because there's a third portrait I always use, and it's of course the Ranger. This one, great character, it's an elf, and it's uh, a Ranger, and an Archer, that's, that's a very easy choice. I need one Archer in my group, he's lawful good, and... Um, Let's see, 88, well, that, that's almost perfect. Oh, oh dear, I clicked away in 89, well, bad luck. 87, 89, well, there it is. Let's see, dexterity 19, that's great. Uh, doesn't lean a lot of doesn't need a lot of charisma, I need some more wisdom, intelligence is useless, constitution 16, well wisdom no, that seems uh, about right, okay, skills, that's an easy one, it's going to be uh, longbow and shortbow. And we can choose a racial enemy, we get a lot of uh, extra attack against it, and I think Huanti is, uh, is useful in, in this game. A lot of Huantis. Let's see, clothing, it's going to be green with brown, and this hair, I don't know, let's make it blonde, that's okay. And I like God's grant me side this one. The, animal, the demons of sleep hound me. And his name is going to be Danny Vorden. I like that as an elf name. Okay, so we have three characters, and I'll start with the sixth one because that's an easy for one for me as well. It's going to be a female, and I always use this portrait. Um, and it's going to be a regular mage. I'm not going to make a sorcerer, and I'm not choosing anything here because it all might hurt me in the long term. So let's make a neutral goods uh, mage. With a lot of intelligence, of course, and um, 
she'll be very weak in the beginning, but eventually she'll turn in our uh, strongest character, like Ari. But this one's going to be a full mage, no cleric. 85. 85 is uh, is all right, and uh, 80 like 87 or 88 would be even better. But uh, with some classes, it's easier to roll high than with others because some classes, like a paladin, it's always a 17 char charisma, so you get higher rolls. Uh, and yeah, with a wizard, it's not that easy. With a mage. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Alright, let's uh, play with 85 strength. We're not using that much. We do need some more dexterity. Uh, wisdom is useless. Charisma is useless. We need a lot of intelligence. And uh, let's make it a bit realistic. Some more charisma. Alright, more charisma. And his, uh, her um, speciality is going to be the sling. I don't want her in the front lines. Identify and magic missile. And she already knows magic missile. Appearance, uh, orange with yellow. And of course we're going to use... This one. And her name is going to be Nikki. Oh dear. Well, okay, so we have four characters now. We have the mage, we have the ranger, we have the fighter, and we have the paladin. We need two more, and there are a couple of options here. We could go for a rogue and a cleric, which is going to be a very safe choice and a very well-balanced party. We could also go for a druid and um, left, like a, a bard. But I'm not. I, I I haven't really played bards and druids, so I'm not too familiar with them. I do know that druids are quite well-balanced in this game, but I don't like shape shifting. I never I never did. So I'm not going to play a druid. So what are we going to play? There are a couple of options. We could go... Um, we could go for the Bard, or we could go for the Rogue. But let's make this character first. I like this one as well. And we need a, we need a Cleric, I believe. So let's make a Cleric. And then we'll make a... Isn't there like a kit for cleric? Oh yeah, here. Priest of Tear. It's like this divine cleric. Plus one to hit and damage rolls every three level for two rounds. Uh, that's 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 a good one. Or we can go with Seeking Sword. Plus four. Cannot cast spells, that's not too helpful. And this one, Moon of Lavender. One extra attack per round, that's not too bad either. But Law of Just and Justice, that's uh, that's something I like. So let's play a Cleric of Tear. Lawful good. And we need 85 at least. Eighty-five, at least. We need eighty-five, at least. Eighty-four. Well, it's better than nothing, I guess. But uh, we aren't too lucky. Eighty-three, eighty-two, eighty-seven. Well, thank God. Uh, we need a lot of wisdom. We do need a lot of wisdom. And, uh, well, quite a lot of strength and, uh, and constitution as well. But she's not very intelligent. Oh, 
Alright. Skills. Mace and Sword and Shield style. Three spells. Cure light one wounds tw twice and bless once. Should be sufficient. Appearance. That's uh well what can we do? We can try this one. At least we can distinguish her then. And which voice? Onward! It is an honor to leave. A stout sword and this is no. a lot. My aim shall be true. If you wish for my leadership, attack. I shall lead the way. <sighs> Let us not waste time. Don't really my like her. Confidence. I'll be taking it from here. Dashens! What? Let's dip. Follow me. Hmm. I get all she prepare to be yes, strong die. It is only right. Oh that come I'm on, there should be some nice voices. You will to fear a woman's wrath. Queen for a day, is it? Whatever we have. Okay, that's good. That's uh, that's a good voice. Name Uh yeah, what is her name? Well, let's go for Mara. Okay, so that's four five. Now we need we have one more place and it it needs to be either a rogue what is I am saying a rogue a thief or a bard. And of course the thief is the better choice because it's far more flexible. Uh, I've never played a bard, it's like a poor man's thief with uh, with some extra abilities. Nice abilities, I mean bard songs, they can be extremely helpful, like uh, extra spells and then you know. Uh, however, then the thief with kits is quite strong as well because the let's go for uh, this character. Let's see, it's going to be well, let's say well, let's say a halfling. Yeah, it's a halfling, and it's a thief. And then there are a couple of options. Like a Shadow Dancer is really stealth based and I don't really like to use stealth so I'm not going to use it. We have an Assassin with a lot of very nice backstab ability. Uh, however, it's a, a poor thief basically. We have the Bounty Hunter which is like this uh, s snare specia specialist. It's, uh, it's uh, not a good thief too but better than the Assassin at least. And then we have the Swashbuckler, cannot backstab, cannot perform sneak attacks, but very nice armor class, uh, bonus to hit, two weapon styles. Let's go with the Swashbuckler. And it's going to be chaotic, good Swashbuckler. 86, well that uh, could be a lot worse to start out with. Try some more, but uh, we'll probably hit the jackpot already. 82. Whatever. 86, that's great. 15 strength, that's alright. No intelligence needed. Dexterity 19. Uh, yeah, some charisma and a bit of constitution. That's a good. Uh, yeah, well, why not? Skills. 40 skills. Pickpocket 40, open locks 40, find traps 35 probably. Set traps 20, 40. Right, two points. Long sword, uh, two weapon style. Appearance. Brown and green. I'll take care. That's fine with me. A silent uh, A silent lady. Come then. Come then. It is a shame that we must. I shall still watch your boy. Yes. Ha <laughs> ha! Good, I couldn't see any. To the pain. The learned should be. Well, I suppose it was only a matter of son. I'll be the leader for now. Here I come. I may not make everyone happy. I'll take That's fine. Let's go for that one. And uh, our last name is going to be. <sighs> What's a. Oh, 
halfling name. I have no clue. I, uh... Well, yeah, let's go for Mirko. Why not? We have Mara and Mirko. That's a bit of a shame, really, but we can't change it anymore. So let's let's start with these six: a ca a Cavalier, a Dwarven Defender, a Ranger, or an Archer. I have to say, uh, a Mage, a Cleric of Tear, and a Swashbuckler. Let's Our go. tale begins here, in the quiet fishing village of Eastwater, one of the so-called Ten Towns of Icewind Dale. The tiny community is hardly a town, but rather a collection of ramshackle huts crowded together upon the icy shores of Lac Dinashir. Here, within a dimly lit tavern, a group of travelers sit huddled around a table, swapping tales and making grand plans for the future, completely unaware of the part they are to play in the events that are about to unfold. What's this? New face in town, eh? Well met, stranger. The name is Rothgar, originally of Hillsfar. But now, after years of traveling up, down, and under Faerun, I am content to call this town my home. Who might you be? Greetings, Rothgar. My name is Murfor. Well then, welcome to Easthaven. Whatever your business in these parts might be, I would offer you this small piece of advice. While you're in my town, you do well to be on your best behavior. These folk are under my protection, and anyone who would seek to do harm to them in any way shall answer to me. That said, I'll let you get back to your cups. I'm sure you've had a long journey, and you'll find there's no better way to shake off the cold of the road than by downing a few mugs of Grisella's best. And if you're in need of lodging, I would recommend talking to Quimby over at the Snowdrift Inn over on the east side of town. Equipment and supplies can be purchased next door, at Pomab's Emporium. Pomab's prices are a bit high, even for a Kalashite. But you'd be better off well-equipped and short of coin than the other way around. Ill-prepared travelers don't last long in these parts. Once you've had a chance to rest up and get your bearings, come by and see me at my house. It's just a couple doors west of here. There's some business I would discuss with you. Farewell. Farewell. Okay. So, um... This is the start of the game. And we're going to... Your desire. Uh, shift here. our party around for a bit. Uh, Give the word. This is better. Okay, so six characters, and they start out with nothing. Before we're going to do anything, we're just uh, going to the smithy to get some uh, some other uh, weapons and armor because Holy this God. is not going to help us at all. So here we are in East Haven. Uh, Snowdrift Inn, but there's like a smithy here, or at least a shop. And we're going to explore this area first, and then eventually we'll get our first quest. This is like the world map. map. We'll go to most places you can see on it. Great game, great atmosphere, great music. I uh, thoroughly enjoy it normally. And it looks a lot better than, than it did. Originally. Let's go to uh, Pomap's Emporium to get some uh, items. Because we start out with uh, a whole bunch of nothing, like a lot of quarter staffs. Of course, they are absolutely useless. Uh, what is this? More barbarians come to my shop. Well, barbarians, I think you're a mistaken friend. Uh, Northerners, I take it you're not from around here. I am, uh, all right, well, uh, oh, I see your appearance as a lowly shopkeeper is just a clever disguise to throw off any would-be assassins, am I right? All right, well, um, whatever, can I just buy something, please? And first we're going to sell all our quarterstaffs, because those are, as I said, utterly useless. So we have 1,226 gold to uh, spend, and first and foremost, armor. Now, 
The paladin needs his plate mail. He needs a helmet. He needs a large shield. He needs a long sword. And that's it. Then we have our fighter. Another splint mail. Another helmet. Um, a medium shield. And a battle axe. Our ranger needs studded leather armor. Uh, a helmet. Let's see, a longbow. No, a composite longbow. It's very expensive, but useful. And uh, arrows. A lot of arrows. Two hundred and forty. Okay, then our cleric, splint mail, a helmet, small shields, and a mace. Our thief, studded leather armor, a long sword. And a short sword until we find another long sword, and then our mage only needs a sling and bullets. Now I'm going to buy some more things. We need a bottle of wine for a quest, I know uh, from experience, and then we need a gem bag, a scroll case. And a potion bag. So 600 gold left, and we have all our all the items we need. Great, so we are fully equipped, and uh, this should make things a lot easier, because otherwise we are incredibly weak, but uh, yeah, this helps. So we can quick save, that's, uh, that's very helpful as well.